As we begin to explore trigonometry, we're going to need to be able to work with angles that are given either in degrees or in radians. So that's the main reason we did, did all that work about angle measure before we really started with our work on trigonometry. But now that we've got that out, out of the way, or at least under our belt, we can start talking about what trigonometry really is. Remember that there's another way to approach this called the unit circle approach, but I'm going to be using the right triangle approach, so we're going to be talking about trigonometric ratios as they are defined based on a right triangle. So here's a right triangle and by way of reminder you'll know a triangle is supposed to be a right triangle if there's a little square right in the corner that looks like a square corner. If that's provided then you know that this triangle is supposed to be a right triangle and you can make assumptions based on that that this is a right angle. If I take either of the other two angles and label it theta, we'll just call it theta for now, that's the most common use of a, an angle name in, in trigonometry, although there are others, then I've got three sides as they relate to theta. There's the side opposite theta, and I'll just write opposite here. There's the side next to theta, and we call that adjacent, and then there's this side here. And you could argue that this is next to theta also. But it's a very special side because it's the only side opposite the right, the right angle. And so regardless of where theta is, the side opposite the right angle we call the hypotenuse. Now you probably remember the hypotenuse at least from geometry. The hypotenuse is always the angle opposite the right angle. Here's a different right triangle. Let me see if I can make it really different. If this is my right angle, then no matter which of these other two angles I'm going to call theta, this side will be called the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. Now, Let's go ahead and label theta. And with that, I can say that this is the side opposite theta. And this is the side next to theta or adjacent to theta. In the same triangle, let's get a different Greek letter. This is phi or sometimes phi, sometimes it's pronounced phi, it just sort of depends. Depends on where you're from, depends on who taught you how to say it, all sorts of things. The side opposite theta is not the side opposite phi. This is the side opposite phi. So which side you consider opposite depends on which angle you're interested in. This is the adjacent for phi. But this is still the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. It doesn't matter how you draw your right triangles. Wherever the right angle is, this side's the hypotenuse. Once you've picked an angle to play with, and only once you've picked that angle, can you identify the opposite and adjacent sides. Here, I've abbreviated hypotenuse H opposite O and adjacent A, and that's frequently what you'll see. In fact, if you've had some trigonometry before, and if you haven't, you'll see this eventually anyway, you, you may remember this mnemonic, this, this memory aid. I have to think about it because I actually know the, the, the ratios by their names, and I, the mnemonic is confusing to me, but uh, it's S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O- a. And that'll help you remember the first three trigonometric ratios. Now, I haven't told you what they are yet, but let's do that next. We say, and this is by definition, that the sine of an angle is the length of the side opposite that angle divided by the length of the hypotenuse. We could just say O over H. These are kind of like variables, but what, how they vary depends on the size of the triangle. 
It's not like you can just plug anything at all in for O and anything you want in for H. They'll be fixed depending on the size of the triangle. The cosine of theta is the adjacent side, the length of the adjacent side, divided by the length of the hypotenuse. Or sometimes you'll see this as A over H. And the tangent of theta is the only two sides left that we haven't used together. And that we have opposite in hypotenuse, adjacent in hypotenuse. We haven't talked about the relationship between the opposite and the adjacent yet. So that's to the tangent of theta. I consider these the three primary trigonometric ratios, but there are six others, and I'll talk about those in just a minute. This can also be written as O over A. There are some abbreviations. We very seldom want to have to write the word tangent if we can avoid it. Mathematicians are a lazy bunch, and so we're going to abbreviate as often as we can. But it's really important that we agree on a standard so that when we abbreviate something, we all know we're talking about the same thing. We all know what's meant by that abbreviation. So when I want to say sine of theta, I'll probably just write S-I-N, the first three letters in sine. Cosine will be the first three letters in cosine. And tangent will be the first three letters in tangent. So you'll often hear people talk about sine theta or sin theta, cos theta, and tan theta, but I still try to say these out, sine, cosine, and tangent, because these are just abbreviations. Cos doesn't really mean anything, but cosine does. All right, now I'm going to look at the other three trigonometric ratios, but I'm going to do them kind of a different way than, than most people introduce them. And that is primarily that I'm going to give my list upside down. There's a reason for this, so bear with me as I go through these, these other three ratios. These other three ratios are the cotangent of theta, and that's adjacent over opposite, the secant of theta, which is the hypotenuse over the adjacent, and the cosecant of theta, which is the hypotenuse over the opposite. Now it's not really the hypotenuse over the opposite, it's the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle divided by the length of the side opposite theta, right? So I'm already abbreviating here by just using H and O. I'm abbreviating further by saying that this is hypotenuse divided by opposite, when what I really mean is the length of the hypotenuse divided by the length of the side opposite theta. These ones can also be abbreviated the first three letters of cotangent are C-O-T. The first three letters of secant are S-E-C. The first three letters of cosecant are C-O-S. But here we have a problem because we already have a C-O-S. And these two things have different meanings. This one's hypotenuse over opposite. This one's opposite over adjacent. So we can't use the same shortcut or the same abbreviation. We need to come up with something else. Mathematicians years and, and millennia ago decided that CSC would stand for cosecant. Again, you'll sometimes hear people call this cot theta, sec theta, and I challenge anybody to pronounce that. So I'll call them cotangent, secant, and cosecant, which is really what they mean. And now I offer you this. Notice that the sign is opposite over hypotenuse, and if you go across the street here to cosecant, you get hypotenuse over opposite. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and if you just jump the fence here, you get that secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Lastly, tangent is opposite over adjacent, and its partner there is adjacent over opposite. And that is exactly why I wrote these six ratios the way I did. Down on this side, and then over and back up the other side for the other three. If you write these in this sort of horseshoe orientation, then you get this relationship for, for each pair, right? If I write sine, sine, 
cosine, tangent, cotangent. I need to move these. Secant and cosecant. Then it's not as easy to see the relationship between, say, cosine and secant, tangent and cotangent. Maybe for some of you it is, but I really like them in this order. And so this is actually how I write my six trigonomic trigonometric ratios. When I need to make a list of them, I do it in this way. Sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, up the other way. Sine, cosine, and tangent are the first three, the primary three that use the, the three sides in the three possible different configurations, opposite with hypotenuse, adjacent with hypotenuse, and opposite with adjacent. Those are the only three combinations there are. If you flip them over, those same combinations can be represented in a different format, as it were. These are the only three, opposite with hypotenuse, adjacent with hypotenuse, and opposite with adjacent, the only three combinations of those three sides that there are, but now that they're on their, their, their flipped over, we have a sort of a, a secondary set, right? So it's interesting to note that the sine of theta, which is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, can be thought of as being 1 over hypotenuse over opposite. Well, that's 1 over cosecant of theta. And I can actually do that with all three of these. The cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I can think of that as 1 over hypotenuse over adjacent. Well, that's just 1 over hypotenuse over adjacent is secant. So I get 1 over secant theta. Lastly, if I have tangent of theta as opposite over adjacent, I can think of that as 1 over adjacent over opposite, but that's just 1 over adjacent over opposite, which is cotangent. So I have, in addition to having six trigonometric ratios, I have that sine is equal to 1 over cosecant, cosine is equal to 1 over secant, and tangent is equal to 1 over cotangent. And again, I have that right here. Cosine is 1 over secant, sine is 1 over cosecant. Equally, cotangent is 1 over tangent and cosecant is 1 over sine. So those are some very interesting and really very important relationships. We'll be seeing those again. Okay, I'm going to erase a lot of this. I'll leave this triangle here. I'll erase the mnemonic and I'll erase my secondary triangle. And then I'll rewrite my ratios so that we have them, but I'll just write them as sine of theta in this abbreviated form equals O over H and so on. I'll rewrite that and then I'll come back. I got that all erased, and then I realized I had written this up here, and, and if you haven't seen this before, you might be wondering what the heck I was talking about. This is just a, a mnemonic, a memory aid, to help you remember that sine is defined as being opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's all that's for, and I can erase that now, too. Okay, so here are my six trigonometric ratios. I went down. Then I went across and up from the bottom for the other for the other three. Okay, so now let's take a look at a triangle. Um, I think I'll draw it like this. And I'm going to draw another one. This is a different triangle. It has different measurements. And I'm going to call this one a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And let's say this one is 30, 40, and 50. Now, I hope that you can see that each of the sides of this triangle is just 10 times the size of this triangle. So it's kind of like I took this triangle and zoomed in on it, right? I just stretched it, keeping all the angles the same size, until it was bigger. But now what I want to do is identify theta 
Now, my thetas don't look like they're the same size here. I can't draw accurately enough by hand to have got the scale exactly right. But I want you to imagine with me because the proportions of the size of this triangle are equal to the proportions of the size of this triangle, these angles must be the same size. Okay. I'm just going to work with sine for the moment because I kind of want to make a point. The sine of theta for this small triangle is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 4 over 5. That's the answer. That's all you have to do. If it reduces, you'll want to reduce it. For example, this bigger triangle has a sine of theta that's opposite over hypotenuse. Now that reduces to 4 over 5. Notice that if the angle, if the triangle is just a scaled version of another triangle, the sine of, e of the angle is going to, the, the angle that you're interested in, is going to be the same. So the relationship between these two sides is the same for these two triangles because they're similar triangles. Okay, for that triangle, I just found the sine of theta. For this triangle, I want to find the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. So I'm going to write these all out. Notice that I'm writing them in my horseshoe shape again. There is no law that says you have to do that. I just find it very helpful in identifying the relationship between these two ratios. Right? Cosine of theta is a ratio, and the secant of theta is a ratio. But the cosine of theta and the secant of theta are reciprocals of each other. Anyway, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Let's find the sine of theta by using this chart up here. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Here's my theta. It's hard to squeeze it in, but it's supposed to be in this little angle right here. Um, so my opposite is 1, and my hypotenuse, I didn't label which was the right angle here. Let's do that. My opposite is 1, my, my hypotenuse is 2. So sine of theta is 1 half. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'm going to get the square root of 3 over 2. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 1, adjacent is the square root of 3. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So here I'm going to get the square root of 3 over 1. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, so I'll get 2 over the square root of 3. And cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, so I'll get 2 over 1. But let's make an observation here. Since tangent is 1 over cotangent and cotangent is 1 over tangent, its value is going to be 1 over, or the reciprocal of, its, its cousin. Right? So cotangent is going to be 1 over 1 over the square root of 3. 1 over 1 over the square root of 3. This is like saying 1 over 1. 1 over 1 times, remember when you divide fractions, you, uh, you flip it over and you multiply, so I'll get the square root of 3 over 1. And that's the square root of 3 over 1 times 1. And that's cotangent. The other th the, uh, way you could look at it is just that because you're going to get 1 over this fraction, you're going to end up flipping it over. The square root of 3 over 2 for cosine, secant is the reciprocal of that, is the square root of 3 under 2, or 2 over the square root of 3. For that reason, since sine is 1 over 2, cosecant is going to be 2 over 1, or just 2. So actually, if I'm finding the trigonometric ratios of an angle, then I really only need to find the first three, and then I can just flip them over. As long as I get my chart, if you will, in the right order so that the angles across from each other really are the reciprocals of each other. These are actually called identities. We'll come to this later in the course, but I'll write an identity up here. The sine of theta, that's a value, right? The sine of theta is the length of the side opposite theta divided by the length of the hypotenuse. That's a value, a numerical value. 
and that's equal to 1 over whatever value I get for the cosecant of theta. And my claim is that these two sides are equal, and this is what we call an identity. These are called the reciprocal identities. Sine of theta is, sine of theta is equal to 1 over cosecant, cosine of theta is equal to 1 over secant, and tangent of theta is equal to 1 over cotangent. Those are called the reciprocal identities. Okay, now I want to do another problem, but I'm going to use the same triangle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fact that I've already used this angle for theta, and I'm going to use the other non-right angle, and I'm going to call it beta. And I'm going to find the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant of beta. Remember that once I found the first three, I can just flip them over, and I've got my last three. So let's find the sine of beta. It's the opposite beta, the side opposite beta, divided by the hypotenuse. So I'm going to get the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of beta is the side adjacent to beta, which is 1, also divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent of beta is the opposite divided by the adjacent. I can flip those over. Because I've put these in sort of ascending order, right, kind of opposite order from what you may, may see in many lists, I can write that the cotangent of beta is 1 over the tangent of beta, or the reciprocal of the tangent of beta. So 1 over the square root of 3. Flip cosine over, and you get secant. Flip sine over, and you get cosecant. Now, in elementary school and probably middle school and high school, and maybe even in some algebra classes that you've taken in college, we teach you that you have to um, uh, rationalize the denominator. I actually don't care if you rationalize the denominator. It's a very important skill, and if you take calculus, you will see it again. It's not that we don't care about being able to rationalize the denominator, but it doesn't really apply here. We don't need it. You certainly may, if you prefer, to write this as... 2 root 3 over 3, you may. It's certainly not wrong, but it's a completely unnecessary step. This is a perfectly valid number. It's entirely up to you. I'm lazy. I'm not going to do it if I don't have to. Now let's make another observation here. Because I'm using the two non-right triangles in the, sorry, the two non-right angles in the same triangle, there's also a relationship between the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant theta and the sine cosine tangent cotangent secant and cosecant of beta and that is that the sine of one is the cosine of the other the cosine of one is the sine of the other the cosecant of one is the co is the secant and the secant of one is the cosecant of the other and the tangent and the cotangent are reciprocals so that's another shortcut if I give you a triangle, now, let's do one here real quick. And let's say, actually, no, that's okay. Let's say it's uh, 2, 3, and the square root of 5. 2, 3, and the square root of 5. If I have alpha and rho then the sine of alpha, once I know alpha, which is the sine of alpha is root 5 over 3, I also know the cosine of rho, because it's the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I can find not just these six trigonometric ratios, but all 12 trigonometric ratios, really just by finding these three. Find the first three, flip them over, and you have the last three. Switch them, sine with cosine, cosine with sine, cosecant with secant, and secant with cosecant, and then flip over tangent and cotangent, and you have all 12 trigonometric ratios from, well, in, in this case, it's from this triangle here. But to use this one again as an example, take alpha and find the tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so I'm going to have root 5 over 2. That means that the cotangent of rho is also root 5 over 2 adjacent over opposite. So there's a lot in this screen 
to to take in. Um, we've learned what all the what the six ratios are. We've learned that we really only need the first three because if we arrange the other three just the right way, we can just flip the first three over and we get the last three. We've learned that uh, the two angles, the two non-right angles in a triangle have kind of opposite sines and cosines, cosecants and, and secants, so that if we know the sine of rho, we know the cosine of alpha and vice versa. And that's pretty much all we've learned in this screen, but it, that's a lot. We've also learned that the that uh, similar triangles have identical um, trigonometric ratios. So that's a lot to take in. It's fairly simple information, but there's a lot of it. And quite a bit of it is probably new to you. There is one more thing we need to do in this video, but I've run out of room, so I'm going to do that on the next screen. If we know an angle lives in a right triangle and we know the sides of the right triangle, we can find the tangent of that angle. But what if we have the tangent and we're looking for the angle? Or what if we have the tangent and we're looking for the ratios, the other ratios? Well, one way to do that is to draw a right triangle and use the information. This one was tangent of theta is given. Tangent of theta is 3 over 5. We know that the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So that means this side right here must be 3, and this side must be 5. Now, my triangle is not to scale here. That doesn't really matter, because I'm just trying to use it as a tool to get the other information that I need. If you're more comfortable, you're welcome to change the scenario so that the ratio makes more sense. That would mean putting theta up here so that opposite is 3 and adjacent is 5, and that makes more sense for this triangle. But it doesn't really matter. It's just a tool. Now, let's make our chart. We've been asked to find the other five ratios. We know that tangent of theta is 3 over 5 because it's given. We can find cotangent of theta just by flipping tangent over, but sine and cosine, secant and cosecant, well, that's going to be a little bit more challenging because we don't have the third side. What we do have is a little trick from geometry that you may remember as the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says that the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides. In other words, this side here, which I'll call C, that's commonly what we, what, how we label the hypotenuse. C, the length C, is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So I'm going to have here 25 plus 9, which is 34, all under my square root. And 34 is 2 times 17. That's as far as that breaks down. So this does not reduce. That is my hypotenuse, root 34. I'll erase my scratch work here. Now, now I have a third side. So when I look at theta now, I can say opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, that's 3 over root 34. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 5 over root 34. And then I can flip these over to get secant and cosecant. And there you have it. I was given the tangent. And from that, with the Pythagorean theorem, I was able to find all five of the other trigonometric ratios. Be careful when you're using Pythagoras. Some of you may remember it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's fine. c has to be the hypotenuse, right? The standalone value here has to be the hypotenuse. The reason the square root comes into play is because in this form I have c squared. The hypotenuse squared is equal to this sum. If I take the square root of both sides, I get just c 
but then I have the square root of a squared plus b squared. And that's the form of this formula that I used here. So just be careful. There will be times later on in the quarter when the triangle that we're dealing with is not a right triangle. And in that case, Pythagoras won't work. And in fact, right triangle trigonometry won't work directly. It will still work, but we'll have to do some modifications. For right now, you're, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, you'll have to sometimes, but be careful that you always use uh, the hypotenuse for C or C for the hypotenuse. It's the standalone value that's by itself on the on this one side of the equation. The other way to write this, of course, is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And this standalone value, right, the C squared is not added to or divided by or anything else. It stands by itself. That's the hypotenuse, right? So you can even use dif different letters here, but it's the value that's by itself that has to represent the hypotenuse. All right. In this video, we've looked at what the six trigonometric ratios are and how they're related, not just to each other, but to the relationship, uh, to the ratios of the other, the trigonometric ratios of the other non-right angle in a triangle. In the next video, we're going to be looking at some very special triangles. Some triangles have very nice properties, and we can use the values as exact values in a lot of the computations that we're going to be doing through the rest of the quarter. So in the next video, we'll take a look at those special triangles and how to remember what the values of their sines and cosines and so forth are.